Hello, everyone, and welcome to the program. This is Sunday Politics live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimale in Abuja. Some very good news tonight. We woke up to today. It is a story of the rescue of abducted school children from Kuriga in Kaduna State. The school children were released two weeks after they were taken away in what was one of Nigeria's largest mass kidnappings in years. The students, about 287 of them, were kidnapped when the gunmen and motorcycles rode through their school, taking them away in an incident that sparked outrage and condemnation from several quarters, including the United Nations Students Welfare Agency, UNICEF, and some civil society organizations uh, across the country. The state governor, Senator Ubastani, early this morning announced that the school children, mostly between the eight ages of 8 and 15, have regained their freedom. It's some cheering news. And uh, since morning, um, uh, people have been trooping to the government house, parents, well-wishers, hoping that those uh, abducted students will arrive and they will be able to have a side of them. But we'll get some update on the situation of things I have. Uh, the governor of Kaduna State, Senator Obasani, who joins us virtually live from Kaduna. Thank you so much for joining us, Your Excellency, and congratulations. It's so much of a sharing news for the nation and for the families <laughs> of uh, these uh, school children. Congratulations, Governor Sani. Thank you, uh, my brother, Shivan. Uh, thank you for your support and your prayers. Well, it's good news, and uh, we see that parents are already trooping to the government house in Kaduna State. And from what we gathered from the military, uh, the, um, the defense headquarters had said that they were rescued in faraway Zamfara. Give us an update. When are, are we expected to receive them in, in Kaduna? Uh, thank you uh, very much, Sheun, uh, again. Um... As we are speaking, the children are here in Kaduna. And of course, uh, they are here. Uh, and as we are speaking, in the next uh, few minutes, I will even be with them because I saw them earlier. Uh, they are in a very high spirit. Uh, of course, uh, the military will, will hand them over to me officially by tomorrow. But uh, still, uh, they are here in Kaduna. I have been working closely with the military uh, to ensure that uh, we look after them. Uh, and of course, uh, we are also trying as much as possible to give them some social uh, counseling and look after them before we eventually hand them over to the families. Uh, this afternoon, the family of the children that were abducted uh, and now release, uh, came to the government house. I sat down with them, discussed with them, and the family are also extremely happy. Uh, so at this juncture, I would love to thank each and everyone that supported us uh, from the beginning of this uh, very unfortunate uh, situation. I want to particularly uh, extend my uh, appreciation to President Aswaj Wola uh, the National Security Advisor, the service chief, that is the chief of army staff, the chief of the air staff, the chief of the naval staff, as well as the inspector general of police and the, the director general of the SSS. All of them supported us. And I'm happy today the children are back home safely. And of course, like I said, they're in high spirit. Uh, we have looked at them and uh, the, the doctors are looking after them right now. The psychologists are looking after them as well as, well as the uh, a lot of other people who are looking after them. So they are in high spirit. We thank God. And of course, for me, that is more important than anything. Our children are back home separately. And we thank God. So, so much of a good news. I don't know how much joy now uh, we will be finding in some of these families, some of them who may not even be able to eat in the past weeks that these have happened. But give us an understanding. 287, those are the figures that we know that were taken from Kuriga two weeks ago. But how many do we have? Do we have all the 287 now? There was nobody that ever confirmed that the children were 287. Of course, uh, as the government of Kaduna State, uh, at the beginning, uh, of course, uh, you know, I visited the community and... Uh, Nobody came with any specific figure, but uh, as a governor, 
I listened to most of the media coming up with uh, figures, and I knew even at that time that the figures were not correct uh, because I have been interfacing with the school authority. We have the register, we have uh, uh, everything, we have the record in Kaduna. So, but you see, at that critical time, I didn't want to do an issue with anyone uh, in terms of numbers. What is more important to me as a governor is the separation of the children. Today, I'm happy they are back uh, safely. They're in high spirit. But those numbers were just figment of some people's imaginations, which they just went to the media and reported that uh, the figures were that. Of course, I remember when I visited the community uh, on that very day, uh, of course, some people within the community uh, who have no records just came out and said that uh, the figures were 280 something, 87, thereabouts. But of course, at that time, as a leader, I shouldn't, I shouldn't bother myself about figures or numbers. What is more important is the return of the children. Today, I met the, the, the families with the children. They confirmed to me uh, that uh, the numbers given by the uh, military uh, are the correct numbers. So for me, it's more important. Because once some people who have no connection with the situation decided to politicize the issue, decided to try to undermine the effort of the armed forces, the security agencies, some of us ignore those kind of propaganda. But today I'm happy. The families are happy. The Kandasa government is happy. We're all happy. I want to thank particularly those that pray for the separation of the children. And here we are. They are simply back. Mm. That's more important. That's very important indeed. But can you clarify for the sake of having the correct information, how many people are we talking about here? Uh, of course, uh, if you listen to what the Nigerian Army uh, said, uh, exactly uh, 137 uh, uh, children were released, and that is a number. But I can say here, sadly, uh, we uh, it's only one person that have not returned, and that is a teacher. And of course, uh, that is a fact of the matter. But all the 137 children assembly back. We had an unfortunate incident that uh, the teacher couldn't make it uh, because uh, he had some complications. He was sick. That was what uh, the report we got from the military and uh, security agencies. But the rest of the children, all of them have come back from assembly. They are with us. Mm. We are hearing that uh, from the, the statement from the DHQ, the Defense Headquarters saying 76 of them are females, 61 of them are males, and they are between the ages of 8 and 15. Give us, I know this must have been some sleepless night for you, but kudos to the men and women in the security forces, uh, officials in your government and the federal government who have worked together tirelessly to get these people home. Give us an understanding of what this was all about, what, uh, how much of effort uh, led to this success? And, uh, so let me say it clearly, yeah, that uh, of course that's why I'm really uh, happy with the uh, level of commitment uh, by the uh, head of security agencies in Nigeria. They supported us from the beginning. Like I said, in my own statement, we had sleepless nights. Uh, from the day the incident happened, I can tell you, I approach virtually everyone that can help us. Uh, I visited the National Security Advisor several times. I visited the Chief of Army staff, the Chief of the Air staff, uh, the Commissioner, of the Inspection of Police, and the DGSS has even a few days ago I was with him. And of course, not to talk of Mr. President, that uh, uh, we, we uh, I always uh, compare us with Mr. President virtually on a daily basis is twice or thrice on a daily basis. So Mr. President also was very supportive uh, from the beginning. And of course, uh, we decided to uh, uh, handle the situation very discreetly because uh, we try as much as possible not to jeopardize the lives of the children. Because some people at a certain point wanted to politicize the whole issue and we felt, look, that was really unfortunate uh, for anybody. Uh, to jeopardize the lives of our children because of politics. So we try to encourage the spiritual forces uh, to be more focused, to be uh, more determined, and I'm happy 
they work closely together. It's a matter of working as a team. And of course, uh, I want to also thank the community. They supported us. Uh, that is more important, including the parents of the children. They were very supportive. They believe in what we are doing. Uh, uh, I speak with them uh, virtually on a daily basis. And of course, they were in very, very high spirit that uh, they believe that my leadership, these children will certainly come back home separately. I'm happy today they're back home. Remember in our last week, interview uh, two days ago, I assured you by the grace of God, the children will be back home separately. Today they are back home separately. And of course, uh, this issue, like I said, is an isolated uh, incident. Uh, by the grace of God, I will never ever experience this kind of situation again in Kabul. By the grace of God. So I was going to ask you, uh, what are the guarantees, the assurances that this sort of thing will not repeat itself? We must have learned something as a people, as a government, and as a nation that these sort of things should not repeat itself. Are there any guarantees, any process put in place, any structure that is being put in place so that this kind of thing does not happen again? Yeah, because uh, we realized that in the whole of Kaduna, this incident, uh, we have about three uh, local governments that are really, really the front line local governments that have this kind of uh, security problems. That is uh, Benogwari, Chukun, uh, your local government in particular. Then, of course, and some uh, local governments like uh, Kachi local government in particular. So these are the local governments. So what have we done? We walk, we sit down with the entire security structures, both the Navy, the Air Force, the Army, the police, the DSS. We now have a team. And of course, we uh, traditional rulers of uh, those areas with the members of the State Assembly, as well as the local government chairmen. We also encourage them to defend their intelligence because the security really also needs support. What happened is that uh, most of those people in the local areas, particularly at the local government level, at the world level, are not really working closely with the security agencies. That was why we have have this problem of intelligence gathering and sharing with the security agency. But the security agencies are really working extremely hard in Kaduna. So we have learned our lesson, and by the grace of God, uh, this incident will never happen. You know, mm. remember last week, that by the grace of God, this children will come back home simply. Mm. Here they are. Um, now I'm assuring by the grace of God, we will certainly uh, work closely with those at the grassroots. Because let me even... Uh, Draw attention to what happened in uh, uh, Kajuru local government. You know, recently there was an incident in Kajuru local government that some media went to the press saying that 87 people were kidnapped. And I can tell you today, sitting here, uh, most of those people have returned home. The military have initially brought about 16 of them back. Only a few days ago, more than half of them are back home. So now we realize that we don't even uh, have up to uh, 10 people there because most of those numbers were wrong. Uh, some people will just uh, get to the media and come with numbers that were not verified. But having said that, all those areas I mentioned, the traditional rulers have given us assurance that by the grace of God, they will continue to work with security agencies. And we also discovered that there are some level of people that... Uh, uh, we need to check, particularly the strange faces that comes to our communities. And the traditional rulers have assured us they have to be more vigilant to ensure that they ensure that whoever comes to our community must be checked to know that whether he's a good character or not. Mm. Because the issue of making sure that people living in those communities are people of good characters are very important. Because we realize that there's problem of uh, being informants even uh, working against the effort of the security agencies uh, in most of those communities. So we are tackling the situation and by the grace of God right. uh, and in this issue going forward. Well, I mean, let, let me ask you, I'm curious though, is it, was it a kind of military operations to get his uh, children out or was it, did he entail some kind of negotiation because we are hearing maybe the likes of uh, some negotiator like Shea Gumi or the rest were involved uh, could you clarify for us what, how, the, in the nature of uh, the rescue? Well, all those speculations they are gathering today are figment of some people's imaginations. I can tell you they have had any fear of contradiction. There was nothing like that. Uh, what is more important to us, there was nothing like Gumi in this uh, equation, I can tell you. 
And but of course, sitting here, uh, I will not go and undermine the effort of our armed forces. Uh, they did their best. What is more important today is that our children are back. Most of those permutations are not necessary. If their child is kidnapped, will he be sitting down talking about how he how is is released? That's an act of responsibility. For me, what is more important, those children are back home. The parents are extremely happy. I'm with them this afternoon. What is more important to them, they want to reunite with their own children. But some people have no business with this situation. I don't want coming out with some irresponsible permutations about whether a ransom is being paid, whether someone has gone into kinetic approach or not kinetic. What is more important? The children are back home. For us in Kaduna, is the most important thing. Any other permutation for us is, is, uh, doesn't make any sense. Um, just trying to get um, some clarity, although I know you have a meeting that you need to go now. But um, perhaps my final question to you, uh, Governor Obasani, tonight will be the linkage between Kaduna and Zamfara. It does look like the bandits have gotten a safe haven uh, in Zamfara uh, Forest, uh, taking your people into those forests. What lesson and what are you doing as a government in that scenario? Of course, it's not me. I had a meeting with the GOC, one mechanized division. Uh, in Kono, we have Operation Wild Punch that uh, covered uh, the Benuwari forest that uh, borders Kaduna with uh, Zampara, as well as the Giwa that borders Kaduna with, uh, with uh, Kazina states. So what is more important is for the security agencies, particularly the military that I head in the Operation Wild Punch under the GOC one mechanized division, to make sure that they, they look into those borders. And we had a meeting today, and they assured me they will close those areas. And of course, uh, like I said, some people are making their own analysis. Was it last week? In Kaduna, Kaduna is not a safe haven for the, for the terrorists. That's why when they kidnap our people, they will run away to Zampara. That's why they can be comfortable. Today, we went to Zampara and brought our children back home. So that's what I'm telling you. There's nowhere in Kaduna State, as we're speaking, where there have been no worry whether you are or anywhere, that the, the, the bandits will say they have already taken it over as they are safe heading. Yeah, they, they cannot. Kaduna is safe. I can tell you today, but some people are coming with their permutation because they have no idea about what Kaduna is all about. They don't even know Kaduna. Most of them have not visited Kaduna. So that is the reason why. These children we're talking about, that is the reason why I'm thanking the military and other security agencies because they have to travel up to Zampara, that's Sado, to be able to bring the children back. There is nowhere in the whole of Kaduna Forest where bandits can say they have taken off, as we're speaking today. All right. Governor Obasani, thank you so much indeed for making time out, and congratulations again. You told me that you have a meeting at 8 p.m., but you spent some minutes with us to give us uh, some information as to the good news. Thank you so much indeed. And I wish you the thank very, you very, very best. You, you. The good people of Kaduna and the government of Kaduna say thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. Thank you, thank you very much. We'll take a break, everyone. And when we return, we shall be speaking with yet another governor, this time on the issue of state police and the economy. Exactly, and you see Governor of Nasara State, Abdullah Sule, will be joining us next on the program. We'll be getting some insight on some of his national issues. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. 16 state governors have endorsed the establishment of state police. This was part of the resolutions at the last National Economic Council meeting, which held virtually and chaired by the Vice President, Senator Kashim Shatima. The Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, uh, Tuko Bagudu, briefed State House correspondents uh, after the meeting and said, out of the 36 states, 20 state governors and the FCT were yet to make their submissions. However, it did not mention the states. The governors who submitted their memos are called for, have called now for the review of the Nigerian Constitution. In another forum, the Northern Governors Forum says that it has agreed with service chiefs to adopt new methods to address the recent spate of kidnappings in the region. The chairman of the forum and governor of Gombe State, Unuwa Yaya, told journalists after the closed-door meeting in Abuja 
He said that the meeting attended by the National Security Advisor, Nuhu Robadu, and the service chiefs who were made to review the security situation, I agreed to adopt alternative, alternative options to tackle it. Security. Let's get some. Security is very typical, especially uh, with the recent issues of kidnapping in the Northwest. And we are becoming so concerned that we need to discuss, review, and possibly take alternative options to what we have been doing before so that we can have a better result. We are amiable to it. In fact, that's the best way to go because the issue is uh, until we join the two, and already the service chiefs and all other security agencies have been doing their best trying to cover up. So what we need to do is to change style, especially adding with a non-kinetic approach, so that at the end of it, when we join the two, we'll have a better security situation in the country. All right, then. Let's get some insight now and some details on some of these issues and some perspectives that we can learn from tonight. I'm being joined by the governor of Nassau State, His Excellency, Governor Abdullah Sule, joins us virtually from Lafayette. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, and thanks for your patience tonight uh, on the program. Thank you, Sharon. It's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Uh, perhaps we, we should uh, get some uh, uh, perspectives on what happened uh, in uh, in the university when the palliatives were being distributed. What more do we know about that sad scenario? The likes of Mr. Femi Fallon are already asking uh, for compensation in what he described as negligence. Well, you know, uh, I just listened to you and the governor of uh, Kaduna State. You know, he made one statement that there are a lot of people who have no idea, who have no... Uh, reason to start making a lot of noise, but they make noise anytime there is a tragedy. In Nasarawa State, we have eight, approximately eight uh, uh, institutions where we had the same uh, distribution of palliatives. And uh, a lot of people do not even know the reason why we went ahead doing that palliative. We started actually with the Federal University here in Lafayette, where we had 4,000 students that received the palliatives of two bags and 5,000 naira each. We didn't have any incident. We moved to the Isa Mustafa Agwe Polytechnic, which is a state polytechnic here in Lafia, where, again, another 2,000 students, 2,500 students received, and then we didn't have any problem whatsoever. The same thing would be, uh, anyway, at the end of the day, we went to eight different institutions, and we did not have a problem anywhere. Unfortunately, we had this incident in uh, uh, in um, Kefi, you know, at the state university. And uh, from what you saw, you know, it's very unfortunate it happened, but it has nothing to do with any planning. It has nothing to do with any negligence. You know, for the eight places that we have been, it was the last place, you know, which will have been the ninth uh, institution that we will go. So of all these other places that we went, everything went so smooth. And for three or four days, you know, the state was getting nothing but praises, you know, both from the media and from everybody else, from the institution, from the students, everybody was... Uh, praising us, you know, and thanking us that we were doing this. So everywhere was calm. Unfortunately, that of Nasrallah uh, uh, State University in Kefi, which was really the last one, you know, it came out with this. And it was not during the distribution exercise that it happened. You know, I'm happy that you are actually showing the pictures of other places where everything went so smooth. You know, there was no problem whatsoever. You know, so it was not because of planning. It was just because of some students from what we were hearing now, you know, some students, you know, uh, thought their names were being misplaced. Uh, some students thought that uh, the uh, SUG leadership, you know, the state university leadership was actually removing their names and replacing with some other names. And so, so many students started coming as early as 4 a.m. You know, uh, and she, we are very sad that two students died. But she, we are very happy that it is two students that died. If you see, you and you have shown it, you saw exactly the kind of stampede that was there. So that's the kind of thing that you will find several students dead. You know, um, unfortunately or fortunately for us, two students died. Very sad. 
you know, and then we were following up with the families. So for somebody to take it and, and make politics out of it by saying we are looking for compensation, well, is he a member of the family of those people to look for compensation? Does he even know what happened? Does he know what the families are telling us from what has happened? You know, so it's unfortunate that it's in a country where everybody looks at a tragedy and try to make politics out of it. Well, is it possible, though, Governor, that uh, these two uh, students who are dead, and their families might get some kind of compensation? Is it possible? It's not compensation, you know, because it is, you see, during the process, they overpowered the security. And got so kind, the security did not open fire on anybody. So it's not like anybody was shot. You know, nobody was killed as a result of it. It was during the stampede that happened, you know, some maybe these two students fell on the floor and then some other students marched over them. So who are we going to look for the compensation from? From the students that marched on them or from the management of the university or from who? You know, I mean, as a responsible government, we are going to go and see the family, and we have already done that. The deputy governor has gone, the commissioner has gone to the villages of these two people in Udege and in Panda. We have seen them, and we are going to support the family. We are going to support them with some kind of assistance, but I don't want to use the name compensation because it's not anything that happened, you know, out of uh, negligence on the part of government or because anybody has done anything wrong or, you know, so that's not what happened. Mm. So, I mean, this, this must have, uh, I mean, th there must be some lessons, though. I in the future, uh, because I know that we're in a period that a lot of uh, Nigerians are really feeling the pinch of the rise in the price of commodities, uh, and this might happen subsequently. Uh, it, as the state governor, I mean, state government in Nasarawa, let anything going forward from this and how to do it better. Yeah, what well, you see, uh, uh, Sheon, in life, we always learn, and we learn every day. We try to learn to do this. Now, if you ask us, did we learn anything from the universe, we, even where everything went so smooth, do we learn something? Yes. Even at the federal university, you know, when we came out, I say, okay, you know, next time we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do that. And look at it, how did it happen? There was no plan for giving students any palliatives. There was no plan for that. But what happened was that I went around the entire state, 30 local government areas with 18 development areas. That my, the deputy governor and I went to everywhere to ensure that we distributed palliatives to the people. And... After distributing four, four bags of this uh, uh, rice, we came to realize that some students were not given anything. And for that reason, some of the female students were going to some of these beneficiaries and actually doing some nasty things in order for them just to get a bag of rice. So that is the reason why we came in and said, okay, no, no, what? We are going to go straight to the universities and also do something for them, including giving them money. You know, so, but at places, at institutions, as I told you, we did excellently. There was no problem whatsoever. You know, so if you are talking of learning something, it's like maybe something was done wrong. You know, yes, unfortunately, some, some students, you know, out of overzealousness, if you hear from what the uh, vice chancellor of the university even said, he said that some students out of impatience, you know, so that's the word he used, you know, that went in to do that. Some of the students accused their leadership of the student union that they were changing names. That was responsible. You continue to hear one thing or the other. Are we going to change the student unions? Are we going to say, you know, so it depends. But you learn something new every day. I don't want to take a situation of some where people died and were mourning and I come and try to defend uh, some political accusations. So when we look at the figures coming in uh, on the federal allocation going to the state, which has since increased from the late last year up until early this year. Nasarawa State, for example, got 7.7 .7 billion naira from federal allocation as of in February of this year. Uh, those who believe that the state governors have a role to play in what has become a major economic nightmare in the country. So the question will be, Governor of Nasarawa State, how will the people of Nasarawa State benefit more uh, in terms of the food on their tables and the money in their pocket in the increased federal allocation that has come to your state? Uh, Sheun, I'm from the private sector. I don't believe in even these palliatives, but it is absolutely necessary right now because people are hungry. I believe in creating opportunities for people so that they can have their independence. So what we are doing in Nasarawa, for instance, we have gone and acquired 10,000 hectares of land 
Our plan is to employ some of our, our youth, you know, in the area of agriculture, so that these people, we are going to buy tractors, we are going to buy more tractors than we need in that farm. We are already talking to some tractor suppliers, Mahindra and co. They are going to supply us with some of these tractors, and we are going to lease them to some of our farmers so that our farmers can now do more. We are also looking more about this particular farm where we are employing more people. We are working on commissioning some of the lithium factories that we have in Nasrallah State. That way, our people can actually gain employment. I believe that people should not be given fish all the time. They should be taught how to fish. And that is the, the reason why I got in trouble a lot with some people in Nasrallah State because I say I make this statement. But you see, that is my background. That is my training. That's how I'm brought up in the private sector in order to teach people how to do that. I'm sure you have seen recently you know, where about uh, uh, 30 students, you know, who got first class, we taught them some skill before we gave them working capital. Just two days ago, I also gave working capital, you know, to some of the farmers so that they can go and do more rice. We are buying more fertilizer to give to some of our own farmers. We are uh, uh, working with a bank of industry, you know, to find some of our youth to teach them some skills so we can give them more working capital to go and be doing something else. You know, palliative is because people are terribly hungry. So no matter how bad I feel about it, we must do it. And that's why I went through the 30 local government areas by myself to distribute palliatives to the people. And that's why we are going also around the institutions to do that. Because people are hungry, especially during this month of Ramadan, which happens also to be the month of Lent for our Christian brothers and sisters. And that's the reason why we are doing that. So, but, I mean, as a state government, what would your state be known for? Because uh, uh, there are, there is, um, we've come to a point in our lives as a country that every federating state uh, for trading units in this country needs to internalize and identify what they need to be known for, their own character and what they will get, give to the center or perhaps make into an export that will bring some kind of foreign exchange. In Nasarawa State, what produce would you like to bequeath to the center or to the rest of the world? What would you like Nasarawa to be known for? This is a very good point in our lives that we need to now identify uh, a point of comparative or, or, or strength and advantage. Nasara will be known for what it has always been known for. Two things, agriculture. I have just mentioned to you, you will be shocked to hear that because of this scarcity of food in one area alone, one local government, in our local government, you know, the farmers on their own, the outgrowers, supplied almost 500 trucks of rice from that location alone. So Nasara wants to be known for agriculture. That is what Nasara State is known for. I have mentioned to you many times on this uh, 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 at a TV station that Nasara State has actually gone far in carrying out various areas of agriculture. In most cases, you will see we are number one, we are number two, or we are number three. You know, sesame, we are number one in the country. Rice, we are number five in the country. Yam, we are number two in the country. Cassava, we are number two in the country. Our plan is not to be number two or number three or number five. It's to be number one everywhere we can. And that's the reason why, in addition to what all the other people are, are doing, Olam has its biggest meal here in Nasrallah State. 50% of the 120,000 metric tons meal is being fed by outgrowers in Nasrallah State. They give them the, the, the seeds, they supply them with the, with the party. You know, that's what we are doing. And I just mentioned to you, one area that has been neglected, which I believe Nasrallah State is going to do very well, is the area of mining. You know, it has been identified. We have built, we, along with the Chinese companies, built the first lithium processing plant that is going to be processing not less than 4,000 metric tons a day, you know, in Nasrallah. We are going to commission it, you know, in the next two months. Once that is commissioned, it will be an, an opportunity, you know, for the foreign exchange that we are talking about. I'm not even talking about the oil yet, because as far as the oil is concerned, they are still on the exploration while which they started a year ago, and they have not finished that. So from all indications, before they do the appraisal well and then put on their development plan, it is going to take much longer before Nasara begins to make impact in the oil and gas sector. 
you know, all these are opportunities that exist in Nasarawa and all these are opportunities that will be pursued vigorously in Nasarawa in order to add to the economy of the Federation account. Let's look at what uh, the outcome of that um, meeting with the NSA and uh, on, on the other hand, uh, with uh, the National Economic Council chaired by the Vice President. Uh, let me ask you, Governor, uh, did Nasarawa State submit a memoranda or a memorandum or, or on this issue of state police? No, we are one of the 20 states that I asked to submit. It's not that we are against it. It's not that we are for it. We are still on consultation. I strongly believe, rather than sitting down in my office and writing to the uh, center that Nasrallah State is in support of state police, it will be wrong. The House of Assembly must be consulted. Must be non our major stakeholders must be consulted. They must agree this and that, and that's the process we are. So Nasrallah State, indeed, I can confirm to you, is one of the 20 states that has not yet submitted. But it's not because we are against it. It's just because we are still going through consultation. What what do you personally think? Because I look at the 19th state of uh, of the north in Nigeria, and you look at every of the state either in the northeast, in the north central, or in the northwest. There are uh, and leaders of thought, uh, traditional rulers, uh, religious leaders in the northern region of the country uh, have come out to talk about uh, the problems and the issues of the north. For those of us who come from uh, the northern part of the country. We imagine that there must now be a new thinking on how governance uh, should go in the northern region of the country. And the meeting with, uh, on one hand, uh, at the NEC meeting and the NSA, because the governor of Gombe, who is the chair of that, uh, of that forum, is talking about alternative methods. There are issues of out-of-school children. There are issues of poverty. There are issues of insecurity. The North is burdened by all of these indices that are pointing to the negatives. What are those methods that you and your colleagues thought about? Well, uh, uh, just like you, you mentioned, that is correct. Uh, the North is actually bombarded with so many of these uh, same problems that you are, you are mentioning. If you look at out of school, you know, we don't look good in the index. If you look at uh, uh, poverty level, you know, we are not good in there. Uh, look at the industrialization and that. But when you look at the population, we are very huge on the area of population. So now most of the northern governors, especially, you know, that I know, and especially that are doing, uh, are getting this improved revenue. We have sworn that with this improved revenue, if the North is not able to come out out of this level of poverty that we are doing, it will be our fault, because no governor actually will be will, will, will be allowed, you know, to escape with this kind of the resources that we are receiving. To say that you have done nothing for the people, you know, with all what we are doing. So I have seen a lot of governors, you know, are doing a lot in the area of agriculture, a lot that are doing in the area of education. A lot. Of, uh, we just had a meeting recently, you know, where they inform us about how much Gombe is doing in the area of uh, 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 education. You know, as far as taking students out of school. You know, so you have so many uh, uh, programs, you know, that are going on in the north. But I'm not one of those that actually advertise what we are doing until we just do it and succeed, and then you we get there. So we are doing so much, and uh, uh, a lot of the northern governors are trying to do the best they can, you know, to take their states out of the quagmire that we have found ourselves. But it's not looking good for the north. You know, uh, each time I look at the numbers, you know, of the indices, you know, you will see that the north is actually, if you look at number 36, maybe even from number 26 to 36, is all going to be northern states. So it's not looking good at all when it comes to that. You know, I agree with you, and I think every northern governor is aware of that, and every northern governor is trying, trying to do the best uh, that he can to take the state out of uh, where it is and get some improvement. Would you say that maybe the level of poverty and some of these human capital indices that are in the negative is what is responsible for insecurity in the northern region of the country? Well, it's a combination of factors. That one is also a factor. Just this afternoon, you know, we were mentioning about, you know, if you, if you are familiar with the rail lines in, in the country, the old railway lines, a lot of the rails have been stolen. 
You know, if you take it all the way from the southern part of the country into the northern part of the country, a lot of it has been stolen. But if you go to certain places in the north, no matter the level of poverty, the people did not steal the the, the, the rails. You know, the rails are still there. The rail lines are still there. So they don't believe in vandalizing government property and things like that. So there is still some level, you know, of us trying to make sure that we get out of this. So there are still some good people who believe very strongly that once they have the opportunity to work, they will work. And that's why easily, you know, I told you that we want to employ not less than 4,000, you know, you to go to a farm. And we already have more than that. We are employing more teachers, you know, in order to give people more independence. We are given a little more uh, uh, improvement on salaries and things like that for workers so that they can they can take home a little more. You know, those are all the kinds of things that you will continue to do. But, you know, for us in Nasara, we are lucky because we are very close to Abuja. We kept promoting industrialization housing opportunities and things like that. Every every now and then you will see that we are actually, you know, commissioning one housing project or the other. We are doing that. All that is opportunities to create employment for our our people because without employment, without education, you know, we created in Nasrallah State by law, you know, the Human Capital Development Agency. We are one of the few states that have human capital as an agency you know, that we developed to, to go in in that because we believe in that. We are promoting vocational and technical education, as I mentioned to you earlier, so that the moment people have skill, they are given some kind of uh, a working capital, you know, some path so, to continue. So there, there yeah. will be a lot of people who will say, oh, Governor Sule seems to have all of these very lo lofty and very good ideas on lockdown in Nassau. Well, but how much of that imp has impacted in the lives of the people, in the major economic indices in your state, in terms of uh, unemployment, underemployment, inflation, and all of these, in fact, your GDP, the bottom line, how much of that has impacted and has changed the scenario from where you met it and now? Good. I will give you just one example, and you can take it from there. When we came in, the College of Education, Akwanga, one of the biggest problems we had in College of Education at Panga was one lecturer to about 75 students. One lecturer to 75 students. We had a situation where 18 out of the 47 courses they had, there was no accreditation. We came through that. So we went through that and we employed, you know, academic staff, that is lecturers, 301 between that time and today. So we employed more lecturers than even there were lecturers that we met on ground. Non-academic start, we employed 301 also. So that is how much people we have taken off the street. Now, teachers in the state, we converted 2,500 secondary school teachers, apart from building the schools that we have done. In addition, recently, we employed additional 1,000 teachers for secondary schools, and we are employing 1,000 for primary schools in order to do that. All that is to provide more employment to some of these people. We had given roughly now about a billion naira. You know, well, let me even go back to our pensioners. When we came in, we had pensioners from 1996 when the state was created that reside, that actually left the service 1996, all the way to 2024, we are not even paid. We now, based on the improved resources that we are seeing, we took out all the uh, 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 people who actually retired from 1996 to 2010, and we had paid them off, every one of them, so that they can take their money to go and maybe far, to do some farming, to do this or that, that we have done. You know, as far as the workers in the, in the state is concerned, we made a situation where people did not have their promotions for 13 years. We promoted all the way to 2019 so they can have improved but, but, revenue. But, but, but Governor, Governor Sule, how many people have you employed in total? What was the unemployment rate before now? What is the GDP? What, are, uh, what is your, the increase uh, in the level of your IGR? Well, level of IGR, when we came in, we had 7, seven uh, billion annually. That was 2019, if you go and check the records. By last year, our IGR in 2023 has gone to about 24 billion. So we move over three times on the IGR. And what, how did we do that? We did that as a result of, in fact, plugging some of the loopholes that we found on ground, opening some of the opportunities, especially in the area of 
mining that we were not getting anything. And in the area of a lot of these small scale businesses that were there, where nothing was coming. So we did, we did that. And even before we had improved revenue in June last year, when after the removal of subsidy, we had already taken care of most of these things that we are, we are talking about. You know, so, but, you know, again, as I said, we have all kinds of people. There are people who advertise and make a lot of uh, uh, noise about what they do. Uh, the, the one that I would prefer you do uh, is to have a team of your own, independent team, to come into the Sarawak State, ask around, go around, and find out what is uh, actually happening. Yeah. Okay. Um, on a final note, I, and I guess I have just about 30 seconds, I know you mm -hmm. said that you're still making consultation on the issue of state police. But as a governor, from your experience, you're a, sec you a second-term governor. Just in 30 seconds, what do you think about state police? Do you think that is the way forward for our country at this time, especially as a northern governor also? Is that going to be the panacea uh, for, this? For, for destroying this menace? I, I grew up, I, I went to school, grew up and worked in a country where it's not even state police. You know, you have uh, county police, which is local government police. You have police, even uh, uh, my, the institution I attended, Indiana State University, had Indiana State University police. So I grew up in the background of this independent police and distribution. Now, sometimes we just see what is happening in other countries and we just want to adopt. You know, my concern about state police, and it's not like I am against it, I'm all for it. But my biggest concern about state police, from what I'm trying to tell you, is funding the state police you know uh, the, the next thing after we adopt the state police you will hear the state governors will be asking for review of the sharing formula and you still have military you still have other security agencies under the federal government but we will ask for the sharing formula because states will now begin to ask right. what we are getting right now may not be sustainable you know as i said i don't want to uh, lead anybody to believe that I like state police or I don't like state police. I grew up where state police works, All right. where county police works, you know, where even university police works. So I have nothing against it. Governor Abdullah Isula, it's always a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank you so much indeed for your time again tonight on the program. Thank you, Sean. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. That. Thank you I so wish much. you the very best of your evening. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>